And our next speaker is Charles Centeo, a third year doctoral student with a particular interest in improving health outcomes for vulnerable populations. Uh, we've invited Charles to share some aspects of his uh, research work with us this morning. Charles. My remarks this afternoon now will cover the work that I've had the opportunity to participate in as part of the wonderful health informatics team here at SI. The core aim of connecting people, information, and technology, I'll try to weave in some of the work that we're doing into that framework. I'll conclude with some thoughts on the environment here and some of the observations that I've gathered along the way in this, and as I start my third year here in this wonderful organization. Several years ago, I had an epiphany. I felt moved to do what I now call move from success to significance. I imagine we all define significance differently. But for me, that simply means participating in work that meaningfully impacts other people. That's it. And with that, I decided to get into healthcare. I didn't know much about it. That didn't matter. I didn't have a robust network there. That didn't matter. But I was driven by this notion of significance. All successful work is not significant, but all significant work is indeed successful. So I began my journey that took me around the world and took me here to SI as I honed in on what that might mean for me. And what that means now is improving or attempting to improve health outcomes for vulnerable people, and whenever we're sick, we're vulnerable, for chronic diseases, the common ones, like diabetes, kidney disease, heart failure, and hypertension. So people, one of the projects that I've had an opportunity to participate in involved trying to figure out what barriers people face, what challenges they face as they attempt to follow their treatment protocol. What does that mean? Simply put, taking medications, attending appointments, and lifestyle changes, like diet and exercise. This involved visiting the homes, for the most part, the homes of people who face some pretty daunting challenges. And I had the opportunity to sit with them in their kitchens, in their living rooms, and in one case, on a participant's bed as they had to lay down because they were so uncomfortable and hear some of the stories and try to understand some of the context around these very important health behaviors. My advisor Tiffany and, I, Tiffany and I hope that what we've produced can make a meaningful contribution to the knowledge around what barriers people face when they attempt to follow their treatment plans. Information. Working in HI, in health informatics has given me the opportunity to leverage an already existing partnership that the school has with the Veterans Administration, a partnership that I didn't know existed a year ago. My focus there is trying to understand the circumstances that providers make, providers, nurses, doctors, pharmacists, as they make recommendations for care for their very special patients, particularly those recommendations that may differ from standards of care, which we know happens all the time, but we don't know much about the circumstances in which those decisions are made and the information that's used to inform them. And that wonderful work has hopefully begun to round out my understanding of those circumstances and the work that we'll produce will meaningfully contribute to the body of knowledge around it. Because I've looked, and we don't know much about the circumstances that surround those decisions, and we know even less about the information that's used to inform them. Technology. This is one that I'm obsessing on right now. So how do we leverage these wonderful tools that are available? some available readily, cheaply. 
to get some of that information to the decision points that are happening in exam rooms and clinics all around this country. These decisions that do differ from care standards. How do we leverage the ability to collect information about my blood pressure right now, about how many steps I've taken today, about what I plan to eat or have eaten, and inform providers who are making decisions, very important decisions, that are dependent upon that information. Again, not an area that we know much about, not we at SI, but we generally. So inter interface, the interface of people, information, and technology, although the, the mission has been edited along the way, is still very true. I find those themes easily in the work that's being done in health informatics. Now I'd like to share some thoughts on the organization. UMSI, I've been instructed to refer to it as UMSI. <laughs> the brand. Okay, we're all here because of the wonderful reputation of UM and UMSI. Most of us are blessed with opportunities to participate in work all over the world and do. We don't have to do it here but we choose to. And what a wonderful convergence of motivation that sets up an environment where we all can participate in meaningful work. I'd like to send a special welcome to our international students. And as someone who's had the opportunity to spend time working and living outside this country, I can begin to appreciate what it must be like to be so far away from loved ones and so far away from familiarity. So thank you, welcome, and your journey of courage is extremely inspiring. Next, let's try to keep in mind that problems aren't invented in graduate school. When, they're in the, when we're in the throes of our work, I'm very guilty of this. Sometimes we think there's nothing else going on but the immediacy of the concern. And as I reflect on my professional and personal experience, I see patterns in the challenges. One truism that my parents, both educators, instilled in me when I was too young to even fathom what they were talking about is the notion that growth and development rarely coexist with comfort and convenience. So growth and comfort rarely exist in the same place at the same time. Almost by definition, growth requires discomfort. And sometimes we resist that. I know I do. But together, we can work together, continue to work together, to support one another during these challenging times. These challenges are unpredictable. These challenges we can't dictate. But there's a wonderful environment here of support. And as I look around and see familiar faces, some that I met last night in a, at 501 section, some that I met when I first got here, I make the observation that I've never been turned down when I've sought support. And I only hope to contribute to the wonderful work that's already being done here by doing the same and to offer that support in many different ways, under many different circumstances, when people are facing sometimes very trying, difficult times. Flexibility. I haven't seen another school on campus that addresses a more diverse set of challenges. And I've looked around. Connecting people, information, and technology is not easy. And I submit that that's probably what energizes that work for us. It requires flexibility from all of us. Like many of us, I've chosen to participate in pretty daunting challenges. How to improve wellness, how to improve health outcomes, leveraging technology and information. To support solving them, I'll need to be flexible. I'll need to be confident and bold but not rigid and narrow. Sometimes that's a hard balance to strike. 
Chipping away at these issues will require the best from each of us and support from all of us. And I think this environment is so rich in that area. I'll conclude with sharing my reflections in my, on my fifth autumn in Ann Arbor. Two at the business school and my third here. The mornings become a little crisper. The leaves will change color soon. And new possibilities abound as we enter into a new academic year. And of course, there's football. I didn't mention America's favorite game to impart another cliche. But I will share that my observation is that some of the very best coaches have first been the very best teachers. And some of the very best players have been the very best students. Vince Lombardi is one of America's most respected, revered coaches. He also was, a, more important to me, a wonderful teacher. And in his first meeting with his first team, his first Green Bay Packers team as head coach, he told them that he, and he would push them to, relentlessly pursue perfection, knowing that nothing is perfect, so they wouldn't achieve it. But along the way, they might achieve excellence. He told them that he wasn't the least bit interested in being just good. And it inspired them. And as I look around, I see professors prepare lectures, advise students, seek tenure, not to be just good. I see staff that plan events like this that rescue us from our crises about connecting our gadgets to the network and printing stuff. They do that not to be just good. And of course, us students. We didn't apply, we didn't choose to come here to be just good. We don't toil away in meeting rooms, try to find meeting rooms to be just good. We don't put our heart, soul, and spirit into documents to have them ripped apart by people in order to become better, to be just good. We don't study together, form groups, and work things out to be just good. So let's keep in mind in conclusion, I heard this during my orientation. The days go slow, but the years go fast. And it struck me as being so true. So as we seek excellence, as we seek not to be just good, I want us to continue to contribute to this wonderful environment, have a wonderful academic year, and yes, let's go blue. <laughs>